it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Howdy. Sorry about the mess. Been a couple of weeks since the last school fall. When the siren stopped, I knew it wasn't a big one, so I grabbed my camera and hustled on up there before any could dissolve. Poor bastards rained down on us from another dimension, probably just as confused as we are. 30 seconds of life, and they spend all of it dying. You're fucking weird. And you are adequately self-aware to recognize the hypocrisy of that remark. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we are discussing Watchmen Season 1, Episode 4. If you don't like my story, write your own. (laughs) (laughs) Some of these titles are pretty good. Some of them are really long. And uh, But uh, this, I I really like this episode. Um, It's just, uh, you know, we, we talk about this with other shows. I think that there's a lot of these episodes that are definitely set up episodes for other things. Yeah. And and that's what I felt like this was. I felt this was a lot of setting up things for what's coming, you know, and which is okay. And which it's okay for episode four to not be, uh, you know, knock it out of the park for us. I think that those first three were, were so good that uh, it just kind of, uh, so what did you think of the, the episode? Just, just first off. Definitely. It was a setup, a lot of surprises here and there. Definitely, <laughs> from what I think about it, a good backstory and a lot of alluding to plots of other characters within the episode that were going to be set up for later, which I'm really intrigued about. And we'll get into that when I, we talk about this within my notes. Uh, I'm loving the idea of hidden characters that were right in front of us and then also <clears throat> characters that we actually have seen and then next thing you know out of the blue wait he could walk things like that you know things of that nature or this this new character that comes in but we've only heard about and we get a little bit more information based upon that person yeah we're getting and we're getting layers on some of these other characters like we're, we're we're learning a little bit more about um, Angela's husband. We learn uh, a little bit about Wade, about Looking Glass. You know, we get we get these kind of deeper insights into these peripheral characters that are really kind of intriguing. And part of me has something in my notes about Angela's husband that I'm not sure how to approach it. I don't know if I want to get into it or not on the podcast. I'll get into that in my notes, and you'll just elaborate because I are I okay. think All we're right. on the same page with that one. <laughs> well, why don't we get started with our top five? Um, yeah, and why don't you start this week? I think I started last week. Sure. My number five would be, I know that we saw this coming a mile away, but Louis Gossett Jr.'s character is related to Angela. That I loved. I really loved the idea for the fact that we have somebody, and he seems to be, yeah, what, 105 100 is what he, is what he said. <laughs> right, he said that in the first episode or second episode, wow. he said he's 105 years old. Yeah, and her getting that info and finally knowing, and just the way she presents it when she sees the hologram, she goes... I know, and, you know, why were you hidden and all these things? That was something I needed to see. Sorry, I I know it was kind of plain as day, but we needed to see that interaction and her accepting of, hey, this character is, you know, my relative and long-lost relative, too. Okay, I'll I'll give that to you, because for me, I, I kind of... 
I went back and forth on that. And in fact, that scene, when I, the third time I watched, when we got to the scene where she breaks into the Institute and gets her whole family tree and does the whole acorn thing. I think I kind of got up and kind of did other things and just kind of listened to it in the background because it's kind of, it was almost to the point for me, like they're hitting us over the head. We, we know, we know, okay, he's her grandfather. We know <laughs> he was the kid in the, in the, be- in the, in the first episode, you know? And, but I, I like that you say that, that you really wanted to get that full confirmation that yeah. he was the kid that was, that was stranded. And we learn all this about like when agent Blake said she ran his print prints, 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 um, when she ran his fingerprints <laughs> and she found out, you know, that he's William, he's Will, William Reeves, a New York cop who retired. And this is, I, I thought this was kind of interesting the way she worded this was that she said that he retired young, but that he's over a hundred years old. And I wanted to go, when did he retire? <laughs> when did he retire? If, you know, if he retired like 50 years ago, then how would you know? And it just, it, it, it kind of, it, yeah, I, I, but I'm glad that you appreciated them giving us that full information. And it is, it is kind of, a, it's a really cool scene with her when she sees the only picture of her grandfather is when he was a child. And she says, I know where you are in a hundred years. You're going to walk back into my life and mess everything up. <laughs> so I really like that. That as she's, as she's talking to it and stuff. So yeah, that's a good, that's a, I like it. I, I, I like that we're kind of different, um, but similar. Cause my number five is just that, that ending of will getting up and, and walking around there in lady true's home. Do you think has, uh, do you think he's been able to walk this whole entire time? Oh yeah. And he was just faking it or did, did lady true do something to make him be able to walk? No, no. I think he was able to walk all this time okay. because think of how healthy he looks and how, come on, he's 105. Yeah. <laughs> he's good. Yeah. He's, well, uh, he's got his mind. He's got his wit. So my feeling is, is that I think the character himself has some sort of ability mm-hmm. in some way. And I'm I'm not saying he's superhuman in some respect, but I think he was able to overcome a lot in comparison to most people. And that makes him super in some ways. So maybe he just uses the wheelchair to kind of disarm people around him so that they Correct. kind of think he's weaker than he actually is. Okay, I'll, I'll go with you on that. I, that. That could be true. I just, it just, it, it struck me as strange to, to see him walking around. But now that you say that, the more and more I, I look back and I think about things that he said and things that he's done and things that we've seen him do or we've not seen him do that indicate that, yeah, he's probably been faking it since the be- since the beginning. That he really Or for could... other people, too, because it's right. a, a great ruse because he's 105. He can walk around with no problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I'll give that to you. You got it. <laughs> uh that would bring me to my number four which would be lady true and all that she does she owns everything adrian Vite has now so now she is asking for more land from people what is up with that i'm liking the character but she has some sort of ulterior motive i think deep down but what really is it yeah, it's just like buying that land at the very beginning. And Lady True is my four, my number four as well. Is is the character, but a little bit more about the character. Yeah, of her. like buying that land at the beginning. She apparently she knew whatever that thing was that was going to fall, that it was going to land on their property, and that's why she came in at the moment when she did. And she says, but I, at the same time, then how how long has she? Yeah, there's so many questions that come out of this whole. Thing and I've got some more about her later with this whole thing falling out of the sky, <laughs> and how long has she known? Because if she's she's known that it was going to crash here for this long, why did she wait? She because she made that baby, mm-hmm. and I don't know how long it takes to incubate a baby, but did, incubate or clone <laughs> a baby or whatever she did to make that baby happen. So. Obviously, she found out this thing was going to crash. She knew when it was going to crash. Yeah. And so she goes and gets and makes this baby, finds out this information about this couple, finds their where, that they tried to do fertility stuff. And then so she makes a baby so that she can buy her house, buy the house. But instead of coming like earlier in the evening and just buying the house, 
why the theatrics of you have three minutes to make this decision. decision. Yeah. And then because what would she have done if they didn't, if they hadn't signed the papers before that thing crashed, you know, then it would have been because that's what she says at the at the end as they're leaving after the thing crashes. Um, they're walking away from the house and they go, oh, what is that? And she says, it's mine now because it it's now her land. Yeah. You know, so it just kind of, it struck me the third time I watched it that I kind of was like, well, why did she wait until there was only I like think three she minutes? Knew something. I really think she. Oh, she, obviously she knew she something. She knew something and was tracing that and when it, it was going to be projectiled down to earth and decided, all right. I'm going to give these people like some sort of ulterior plan to just can me over their land because I need it for what I need to do. And where is it <sighs> yeah. coming from? It's just the obviously we the know the three space junk thing. is like the crash from the end ep uh, end of the last episode. You know, when we see Silk Spectre 2 and she comes out, she's the car crash, but obviously. Yeah, but these are two separate. These are two separate. Two crashes. separate incidences. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. But and yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a little it just it just the whole three minutes thing that just and I guess for the plot of the show and they wanted us to have this to see this character of of Lady True, which I do love. I love the character, don't yeah. get me wrong. I love the way she speaks, I love the way she talks, I love everything, the whole conversation that she had. But the more I think about it, the more I go, Why three minutes? Why not? five minutes why not an hour why not a day you know, <laughs> yeah or a day why why come get these people in the middle of the night or whatever time it was they're just going to bed you know why wait until three minutes before the thing is going to crash yeah when it, you know if you gave them you know maybe it was one of those things where she didn't want to give them a lot of time she didn't that's want what to, i was thinking because then they're going to think about it. And they're going to go, well, wait a minute. How, you know, how long have you had this baby? Uh, how long have you known you wanted her? Okay. I can see now. Now I'm starting to talk back into that yeah. I'm okay with the whole three minutes thing, because she didn't want them to think too much about why she's wanting to buy this land. All It's of a basically a forced decision that okay. she's giving them, yeah. putting okay. them in a, uh, a particular moment. Hey, here, and I need this right now. So I'm going to give you okay. $5 million for all your land, everything that you need, and this child. And then she makes the joke like, oh, we'll just get <laughs> – we'll dispose great. of the child. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It. We'll <laughs> let it be adopted. And I'm like, what the hell? But, it, you know, I love that joke too, but I also love the kind of sinister – the sinisterness that she puts to it because when she tells them, no, no, I'm, oh, obviously I'm not going to kill a child – but he'll never know where he came from. Yeah. And she says that very pointedly because that was the whole thing that they, that she's been talking to them about is legacy is about leaving this legacy behind. And that you're, you're not, you don't have children. You're not going to have a legacy. So here is your legacy. Yeah. So, okay. I'm back on board. <laughs> <laughs> I turned you, <laughs> you turned me around on that in just at five minutes there. Okay. <laughs> so what's your number three? My number three, the, uh... Does Angela's husband have some sort of powers? She asks him if Lady True asked him about his accident, but we don't know what that accident was really per se. Right, not Lady True, the the agent. Yeah. Agent Blake, you said Lady True. Oh, Talk yeah, well, no, she no. asks, yeah. Agent Blake, Agent Blake was the one that came to the house and talked to her husband. Yes, yes. Right, and right, right. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she asks, Agent Blake asks uh, Angela's husband, yeah, if, if he... No, she, yeah, right. Yeah, Angela asked her husband if if, accident, if the agent exactly. asked about his accident. And, You're right. You know, will right. we see that? Will there be a flashback or will that information become? Because I'm really curious because maybe he's get, been gifted something. Maybe he survived that accident because of something particular. Maybe he's holding back information. Who knows? Yeah, I, I skipped over that really quick. Like I, I, I remember the scene. I remember the line. Uh, and I didn't key in on it the way you did. So that's, that's a good catch. Yeah. I wonder if we are going to, we're going to have to, they wouldn't, they wouldn't bring it up if we're not going to find out something later on about it. I'm sure. Uh, I, I, yeah, and they, I did love yeah, that. They were that, both taken though from where, what was it? Vietnam. Vietnam they, well, they met in Vietnam. They met. Yeah. They met in Vietnam and that's where his accident was right. apparently. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Because she's. 
they're not old enough to have been children during the Vietnam War or or born yeah during the Vietnam War at least not the years that we know of of the Vietnam War so mm -hmm. that is interesting it, it makes you wonder yeah I, I now that you've got me you've got me curious about that as well now that to see where that's gonna where that's gonna bring <laughs> us but I did love and this was actually my number one uh I think it was my number one no it was it was later, but we'll talk about it. But I did, I did really like that whole conversation that they have when she comes home and he kind of jokingly says, I told her everything. And he lays out the whole thing. But, but then he's like, of course I didn't tell her that. Um, and what I liked about that, though, is what that shows us is that their relationship is she told him everything. He knew everything that had happened that mm -hmm. night. Uh, which I really like. We didn't have to see it on screen, but just the fact of him retelling it back to her the way he did tells us that she told him everything. She doesn't keep, they don't keep secrets from each other. And I really, I really like that about their relationship there, that, that whole thing. And like she said, you don't like to lie because he said he had to lie to the, to Agent Blake. And so, yeah, I really, really like that, uh, that whole thing. Um, my number three was a little bit confusing to me. Especially, and I paid close attention to it the third time I watched because I wanted to make sure I, I, because my number three is just Angela coming back to the bakery. She cleans up all the evidence that Will had been there. She cleans up all the surfaces that he touched, you know, because he, he grabbed the egg out of the, the boiling pot and, and that kind of stuff. She cuts up his wheelchair and she actually throws the, the we see her throw the wheelchair off the bridge. She does all of that before. Four. Yep. Agent Blake tells her that they found Will's fingerprints in her car. And so I was a little confused about mm -hmm. that, that either she was just being, you know, proactive and like she knows they're going to come after her and search the bakery. And so she gets rid of all this stuff. Like, I, I think editing wise, I wish they would have done the reverse. I wish they would have showed, you know, her doing all that stuff after agent Blake told her that they found the fingerprints because it just, it, it just seems. Yeah. But they did. I think they did it in, cons uh, in, in sequence for the fact that she didn't know. So she just did this and then agent Blake does, but I didn't think we get a, uh, I don't think we get anything like on Angela's face going, no. Oh, like a sigh of no, relief. No, no. And, and you know, it's, it's a little, it's just a minor story point that just bugs me. And I, I can understand, yeah. and it's probably nothing they're going to have to explain down the road. It just was one of those, it just kind of bugged me that she would go to all those lengths to get rid of the evidence that he had been in the bakery before she found out that they found his fingerprints. That's what that's just kind of the third time I like the first couple times I watched yeah. it, it didn't even it didn't even register to me that she was doing all that before finding out that his fingerprints had been found in the car. And it wasn't until the third time that I was like, I went, wait a minute. Mm. Why is she cleaning all that? Like, why is she being so thorough? Like, I, I can understand cleaning up the eggs. The, I can understand kind of maybe cutting up the wheelchair because you don't want the, that evidence. But the extent that she went to erase his, uh, any evidence that he had been in the bakery. That's what, it just, it just struck me yeah. as, as strange that she would go to that great length before she knew it was, but I, I would have, I would have totally bought it. If she had, if she, if agent Blake had said, Oh, we found these fingerprints in your car and they go to this guy named will who was a detective and all this. And, and then have her go to the bakery <laughs> and do all that cleaning and cut the wheelchair up and throw it off the bridge. Then I, I could have followed that logical, that logic a little bit better. I, I think they were trying mm -hmm. to elude that because when she hid the pills from Blake in the car, and then uh, we yeah. see her bring those pills to Looking Glass. It's the way for her to okay. hide certain information, and it's uh, it's a way for us yeah. to see how she works and how she's yeah. able to manipulate a situation. Okay, that's the only thing I could gather out of it is 
that they're they're trying to set it up like, oh yeah, she knows how to be cunning yeah. in in a certain way where she could hide this information. Okay. From certain people. Who knows? So, uh, where does that bring us? To your number two? Yeah, and that would be, what is going on with Adrian Veidt? Honestly, he just seems to be getting these clones somehow from other people from the pond and make them adults fast in some sort of, like, incubation chamber. And they're, like, consistently the same thing, a man and a woman and a maid. What's going on there? Plus, <laughs> the slaughter in the house. W what happened? Did he get upset with all these uh, servants or something and just go on a tirade and kill them? You know, did he do that out of anger? It looks to me like he, he wants to go to space himself from what he's doing with all these antics. You know, maybe he's he wants to see Dr. Manhattan on the moon. <laughs> it is. Maybe he's losing his mind or something. <laughs> Yeah, that stuff with him just gets, to me, This it just gets weirder and weirder, the stuff we're seeing from him. And, yeah, you know, he says, he makes that comment that he's been there for four years and that when he first got there, he thought it was a paradise and then he realized it was a prison. And we we see, like you said, that he, he slaughtered all those, uh, I'm going to say they're clones, I don't know what else to call them. But, you know, he slaughtered all of them in that in that dining room and he, he grabs the horseshoe, you know, out of the one guy's hand and he's like he's like, I don't need this yet. And then he and then he does a ringer and throws it around the knife that he's that he's left in the guy's chest. And uh, then, you know, just the horrified look on Miss Crookshanks and uh, Mr. Phillips as they're loading these bodies into this catapult and shooting them up into the air and they just disappear, you know. Uh, yeah, it's this whole thing with him is just uh, it's 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 cool and it's intriguing, but it's it's uh, uh, at some point for me anyway, it's going to get wearying if they just keep making it more bizarre and more bizarre. Because you know we saw him, and I, I think this is what we're meant to understand. In the last episode, he dresses up into his Ozymandias gear and he says, "I'm going hunting at midnight." Um, and then we see this whole room full of corpses. And so it makes me wonder if, like you said, that's where that he just he lost it and killed all these all these people in this or these all these clones. And it just yeah, I yeah, his stuff just keeps getting more and more bizarre. Yeah, exactly. Especially with he gets these babies out of a trap in the river yeah it looks like a lobster yeah. trap or something <laughs> like, and what is he, he like he like looks at one and throws it back and then he takes two of them and like you said he brings them back to that incubation chamber and grows them to what they are and it's just, like he makes that comment about how they're flawed mm -hmm. and th that he's not their creator but he is their master exactly and he's like he's like if i was your creator i would have created you with purpose yeah but who is creating and these people exactly where where are they coming from what who has put him in this paradise who has put him in this prison paradise whatever huh. um and and i just i it's one of those things that i kind of hope we get a an answer sooner rather than later because if it just keeps getting more and more bizarre it's going to be at least for, to me it's going to be wearying at some point yeah we have how many episodes left and you know come on is it lady true that's making these things yeah i mean there's there's you know we got five four i think it's eight no it's nine episodes so we got nine five, episodes so we got five more five more and so they've got time to to develop this but like you said they're putting a whole bunch more questions out to us that they're not going to be able to answer in just... And I don't want them to do a rush... I don't want them to do a rush job of trying to answer yeah, questions. Yeah, same here. Yeah, if they had to do it in, like, maybe 18 episodes, that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Alan Moore would be on board. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, that brings us to, uh, to my number two. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and my number two is just Looking Glass and his underground bunker, uh, which is not uncommon in Oklahoma, by the way. I don't know any other people. Like, it's just, I know a lot of people that have shelters, underground shelters, because of tornadoes. So it's not uncommon for somebody to have one of these things in their backyard. His look to be a little bit more elaborate than the ones that, that I've seen. 
Yeah, anyway. usually it's like a door and a ground, and you go down inside. This was like yeah, a, and a usually, slightly above and goes down. Yeah, usually they're just one like one kind of space that you're only meant to stay there for a few hours. He looked like he had a bed in his, and so uh, you know his his might be uh, set up for a little bit longer of a time. Uh, he talks about how the squids dissolve after a certain amount of time. And I thought that was really inter interesting point to make. Oh, so yeah. even though we see, we saw people cleaning something up. So maybe they clean up whatever they dissolve into. Maybe they dissolve in like some sort of, of a powder or something. But the, the only thing that I, I will have to admit that I took a little bit of offense to is him m implying that every white man in Oklahoma is a racist. I'm a little bit offended. Yeah, that's a little uh, bit out there and outlandish. Come on, you know, I'm just yeah. like, I, I don't think everybody is. And obviously, we, we have them. Obviously, 1921, there were even more. So I'm, I'm not taking anything away from that. It just, it was a little bit, it took me aback. The first time he said it, I was like, is, that's what? screwed up. Yeah, that's yeah, a little I messed know. up. But, but yeah, I was it like, man, I'm up. a white man in Oklahoma. Does that mean, you know? Oh, I know. So, I, I, <laughs> It's it's absolutely ludicrous, I think, with yeah. that. That's like it's just like assumption, and yeah. it's like I think that's maybe that right winged attitude. Assumption it's a little bit, a little bit part. of that, you know. It's it's, but it, it's it's. I'm sure it was it was said in a tongue in cheek kind of way as well. So I don't think he was being totally serious about it. But I hope not. You know, we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I loved what they. We saw that trust between him and Angela, very much like a cop and, and partner kind yeah. of trust between the two of them that she's she's going to give him. She gives him the KKK outfit that she found in Judd's closet to hide from the FBI woman. She gives him, like you said, she gives him the pills to get tested by his ex-wife and not to be tested at the station, all that stuff. She's really putting a lot of trust in him as far as these these things that she doesn't want the FBI to find out. She doesn't want other people to find out. Yeah, definitely. I'm curious to know if uh, Looking Glass knew John Goodman's character from Cloverfield, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We'll have to see if he's got a bad acid in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that Cloverfield movie <laughs> with Mary Elizabeth Winstead yeah. and uh, John Goodman. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so what's your number one? <laughs> My number one would be, uh, I just love the Beethoven Seventh Symphony for... Adrian Veidt for this episode. That music is done within four modes within the music. Where are we within the show with this, with these movements? Where are they going with this? I have so many questions because it's not the first time we've heard a mm -hmm. Beethoven symphony regarding Adrian Veidt. So I'm curious if the music is in reflection of what he's doing. Hmm. So, or I'm, am I thinking it too much into this? Uh, I guess let them eat cake, I guess, because that's what he was doing during that time with the, he was yeah. trying to kind of droning off. If you looked, he took that slice of cake and I think that slice of cake was in the dining room where the slaughter was. Yeah. I'm not sure where he got it from at that, at that point, but that's the same. We've seen him eat that same kind of cake throughout the whole thing. So I, I think it's yeah. just, that's what his, his food is for whatever reason, which is kind of weird, but. It is. But yeah, I, I, I'm curious about these, you know, because it seems to be a staple for Adrian Veidt mm -hmm. for Beethoven to be some sort of uh, music anecdote for him. And I'm, I'm curious to where it's going to lead. Right. Uh, there's got to be a story behind that in some way. We'll see. So many questions. So many questions. Uh, my number one is uh, to go back the, to that meeting with Lady True and all the things. We've already talked about some of the things that we saw there in her uh, her kind of greenhouse Vietnam feeling area that, that she was in. We get her daughter and, you know, she knows uh, Angela. She knows Angela's relationship with Will. Obviously, we talked about that at the end of the, the episode. She's has Will is there in her house. The daughter knows that Will is there. Uh, there's this statue of Adrian Veidt, but it's the old Adrian Veidt. It's the the Adrian Veidt that we're seeing now in these, yeah, in these in these other scenes. And so, it just so many questions 
that come up and then also the the speculation of whether her daughter is a clone of herself because she's yeah of herself because she's having these memories and and having these dreams and so it's uh yeah this episode just filled us with a whole lot of questions that i don't know if we're going to get answers to them anytime soon nah uh, i'm i'm hoping we get some but i i have a funny feeling yeah. this the yeah. The ending episode of the season will unravel everything. And if they... I hope they don't, I hope they don't wait that long. I really hope they don't try to do this all. This is the problem. One of the problems that I had with Lost is them trying to wrap everything. And, and the X-Files did the same thing yeah. if anybody's an X-Files fan. They try to wrap everything up in one episode. I don't want them to do that. I don't want... Don't rush to... If you need to leave questions out there for us, leave some questions out there for us. But don't... Please do not rush into answering these questions you know don't don't leave us hanging on a lot of them either but at the same time i, I don't want to get to the i don't want the last episode to be a bunch of because the only way they could do it is a bunch of flashbacks yeah which to i don't want to see either yeah, yeah yeah i don't i don't need to see that yeah so. not like a two-hour hey this is what happened and this is what you missed <laughs> yeah this is what was going on in the background while you know this is the sleight of hand this is the magician's trick we were showing you to where this is what was going on in the background when you were looking at the foreground stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, I really wish they would bring it out little by little. Yeah. And then by the time we get to that ending episode, we see what the ultimate outcome is. And yeah. I, I think it's going to be some sort of standoff between Dr. Manhattan, True, and definitely, uh, who else is involved? Sister Knight? Will. Angela Abar and Will. Yeah, as I say, there's a whole lot of things we've got to have to get wrapped up here that, and we haven't even seen Dr. Manhattan yet, so yeah, I don't know. It's just an illusion, gonna... I think. Mm hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's, it's maybe it's they're trying to set to us up for out. season two. Maybe he shows up that's, at the end. You know, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I had one quote here, and then we'll, we'll kind of get into notes. Sure. Uh, I loved when uh, when Wade is talking to Angela, and she calls him weird after he's talked to the squids, and he says, he's very eloquent in his speech. He says, you are adequately self-aware to recognize the hypocrisy of that remark. I really love that, this, that fact of her calling him weird, and he's like, really? I'm weird? You dress up like a nun and go beat up bad guys. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> Uh, had a few notes here that I that I have, and if you've got anything, just uh, chime in. Sure. Uh, I got I've got to correct myself that uh, that Sister Knight on her costume she does wear a badge. Uh, I don't know if it's just in the previous episodes the way she was standing. We never actually saw that badge, but especially this third time watching it today, there's a whole bunch of episodes. Of, of moments in this episode where you clearly see she has a badge on her belt. She's got like a star kind of police badge on her belt. And uh, I don't remember noticing that in the other episodes. Maybe they were there and I just didn't, uh, didn't pick up. I on didn't it. pick up on it either. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the, the Clark's, uh, well, it's not really the Clark's anymore. It's Lady True's field and, and whatever crashed there. Um, I think we're going to see that is an event that I don't mind seeing a flashback to and see someone else's perspective on because I think that's the only way we're going to see what crashed there. Absolutely loved how sweet was that cold open with the Clarks, you know, and her tripping and, and dropping the A's and catching one. Yeah. Showing them, you know, showing them having dinner, showing them flossing at the same time, doing the, the little puzzle. It was just, it was such a, a sweet sweet uh scene that we you wouldn't normally think we we're going to get in a, in a show of this this type so uh, i really really like that uh i don't want to talk a lot about it but it, it kind of surprised me and i don't think I, i've seen any other show take this direction with uh the scene there when the uh Kids are saying that Uncle Judd is in heaven and uh, Topher is saying, no, he's not. Uh, and Topher being very, I don't know if you noticed, but being very cold and very, and he was very direct in his statements to them and very unemotional in the way he was responding to them 
And then, of course, Angela's husband just very clearly coming out and going, well, heavens pretend. And Judd was nothing, and then he was something, and now he's nothing again. It it really surprised me that they went to that kind of philosophy about life and and death and and, and heaven and hell. And then I thought it was interesting that Senator Keene almost broke protocol when he called Angela by her name there in the police station, and he thanked her for saving his life when she was not, she wasn't in costume when she saved his life. You know, she didn't even have a mask on when she saved his life. And so if anyone was within earshot of that, they would suddenly know who Sister Knight is. And I thought that was a little interesting that, that he's the one who set this stuff up for the police to be able to wear masks. And he's now breaking that kind of rule. So anything else that you had from the episode? Not really. I think we covered them all during our top five when I just brought up like casual information you know that that just literally went into what i was thinking in my notes yeah in my head so and like i said we had a, there was a lot of just a lot of questions in this in this episode that we don't we're i don't know if we're going to get answers to them necessarily anytime soon i hope we get some answers i hope we get some answers earlier rather, like i said earlier i really really i don't want them to wait until the last minute to try to reveal everything to us yeah, I would really, really like for them to, you know, dole this out a little bit slowly over two or three episodes and then, you know, maybe some big reveal in the very last episode that we, that we don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And as a true believer in loving the show, I'm still intrigued about the show. I love it. I'm really into the idea of the show. I really want to see the ending and I don't want my mouth to drop and wait for another season. I really want to see what's going on. It's like, I'm not saying here, just explain it to us. I'm just saying here, just give us a little bit more information. Don't be so elusive with the story and the plot. That That's the only thing I have because over what it's been like, what the past two episodes where it's been like, Hmm, okay. We're getting a little bit of information, a little bit of information, but we need a little, a lot more than that. I think. Yeah, time. it seemed like I, I think the reason the, the reason I was kind of this episode was more and I don't want to say I was disappointed in it because that's too strong a word. I was a little more lackluster because it felt like we got like in 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 this in the, the last two episodes, episode two and three, we get a, we get some answers, but we get more questions. This episode seemed to just be. Be, bring up a bunch more questions and not really give us any answers except maybe will being able to walk you could say is is an answer but i really don't yeah i don't think we got any good answers to things in this episode i mean we're pretty sure that it was one of those uh, lady true obviously because she, she has will it was one of those hovercraft things that took his car. It wasn't Archie as we, we talked about uh, that. Some of us thought it might've been Archie, the Archibald crap that took his car away. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing. But I, I I'm still intrigued. I'm not going to, I mean, obviously I'm not, dis, I'm not had yeah, disappointment is too, is too strong of a word. Cause I, I liked the episode. It just felt like it was setting things up for more i did the one thing that we didn't uh talk about and i kind of <laughs> i didn't pick up on it the first few times first couple times watching but the third time i definitely picked up on it was when pd just kind of walks into the office and agent blake shuts him down real quick um you don't knock anymore and he starts to call her Lori. and so you you get this idea that that he thinks that that whole sleep them sleeping together was going to make things a little more he could be a little more casual with her in the office. And she's very clear to him. Oh no, no, this don't mistake what we did for meaning. You can now, you know, just walk into my office whenever you want to, that you can address me casual in, in the office environment. So I really liked that, that she shut him down really quick. And he was just, you just kind of see him deflate there and go, Oh, sorry. And he almost, I, he almost turns around and walks back out again so that he can knock, but he just goes ahead and she's like, don't come in. So I, I really, really like that. The next episode is entitled 
Little Fear of Lightning. And I'm not going to read the description because it does give some spoilers away, but you can go to, if you go to IMDb, you can read the episode description for for this episode. It will air in a couple of couple of days. We're recording this on Friday night, so we'll get to see it pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, and I don't think there's a Watchmenpedia anywhere. Uh, there is the, there is the, there is the PDpedia. Uh, now it's not, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have the episode titles, but it's got the, and I, I'm going to push that again. I, I looked at it a little bit this week. The PDpedia on HBO.com has got some really good insights into the show and, uh, the, the universe that we're, that we're creating here or that, the that Damon Lindelof has, has created. So it's, that's a really, really good website. If you're interested into delving deeper into, uh, some stuff about, the show yeah let's see anything else we've got news or comic talk uh definitely there's a lot and i think you mentioned it and yours but we'll both yeah. say it at the same time disney plus disney plus <laughs> yeah. uh, for those of you that don't know and i can't believe that there's anyone in the world who doesn't uh or at least <laughs> definitely in the united states uh since they had 10 million Subscribers, I think, was the number that Disney put out there in the first two days or the first day. They uh, uh, that Disney Plus has dropped that not all the content that they said was going to be available is available right now, but eventually there will be uh, more and more content that uh, that they have. I watched The Mandalorian. I watched the first two episodes of The Mandalorian, and I love it. I uh, can't get enough of that of that show. I watched a few minutes of. A Disney movie just a little while ago. I uh, started to watch Tron and wasn't able to finish it, but uh, just so many, so many things, uh, so much content now on this Disney Plus channel that I, I, it's uh, you could stay up for hours, uh, days, uh, and not watch all of it. I'm sure. I signed on for Disney Plus like uh, what two or three days before <laughs> it it actually launched and. Oh, my goodness. There is so much. You got Marvel content, Nerica lore, older cartoons. You have all the, uh, definitely the Avengers stuff that's there. All the Pixar stuff is there. Now, some of the Avengers stuff is not is not there yet, but when you click on it, it tells you when it's going to be available. Like, I think yeah. Black Panther uh, and something else are not going to be available until, like, April. Well, and... Endgame is there, and I believe Infinity War is there. Yeah, I... Yeah, are both of them? I think one is and one isn't. Now that you say, I that. know but Endgame I'm, definitely is. Yeah, Endgame definitely is. I'm not sure about Infinity War, and uh, I know that all three of the Iron Man movies are there because I just clicked on those earlier tonight because okay. I have not watched all three of those. What? Uh, well, I mean, I've seen the first two, never saw the third one. Yeah, and uh, I only saw the first two. I think once, uh, once or twice. So I'm excited to watch those again. Pretty much, there's there's so much stuff. There's Pixar stuff on there. And there's, there's more to come, too, people. If yeah. you didn't see the uh, preview for the What If, which I'm anticipating. I'm oh, my excited goodness. for that one. Yeah, we're going to get, uh, what was it, uh, Captain Carter, which is literally Captain Britain. Mm, okay. And it's Peggy Carter given the Super Soldier Serum and his What If version. Okay. And uh, we do get Steve Rogers. So we got Chris Evans doing his voice for Steve Rogers as well as Haley Atwell. And yeah, they they reprise their roles, but it's in cartoon form. So we get those. Yeah, that is the one thing that I, that I want to mention in, in case anybody does start to watch The Mandalorian or these understand that these are Disney shows. These are Disney property. Um, yeah. And, and they're going to be Disney level stuff. Mandalorian is great. I love it. It is not super violent. It's not bloody. It's, it's got some action sequences, got some good fighting and uh, some really cool uh, things in it, but understand that it's a PG rated thing. So you're not going to have, you know, the Deadpool blood and guts. You're not going to have, the the swearing and, and that kind of stuff so it's it's going to be a little bit toned down for those that are expecting something a little more violent but i liked it uh i yeah. liked it a lot i i love the first two episodes i finally got to see them uh the first oh, one so i good i saw the first one i think three times that same day when it came out because i was doing i think we did five installations of wow. tvs that day and i had my phone and i was on the client's 
Wi-Fi, so I was able to broadcast it from my phone to their TV. So they're like, oh, wow. I was like, she yeah. goes, we don't have Disney+. Plus." So I said, I do. She goes, mm. oh, I want to see this. So we watched it uh, at least a good two or three times. And yeah. then I came home and I watched it, and uh, I was floored, and yeah. I, I loved it. I've and watched then, I've watched the first episode twice. I watched the second episode earlier today, and I'm excited to watch the second episode uh, again. Again, yeah, yeah. I uh, I I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the Mandalorian really has intrigued me. Uh, I love the idea and the thought of it. It's definitely a different character. It's not Boba Fett, so at least it's a different story and take. And this di- does, if you guys don't know what we're talking about. It takes place after Return of the Jedi, at least five years after. And it's based upon the Mandalores that are on a moon planet that apparently were in battle yeah, with the th- Jedi, and they have their own armor, and then they became bounty hunters just like Boba Fett. Yeah, there's a whole thing, and I'm sure we're going to get more of it as the as the season progresses, maybe about the tribes and, yeah. and the guild and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, it is it is really good. I, I like I said, I'm really really enjoying it. And I don't know a lot of the other. I, I know that uh, I think one of the podcasts I was listening to today mentioned that the Mandalore stuff is in Clone Wars, the Star yes. Wars Clone Wars cartoon. That they have some history be, in there. Right. So, right. Yeah. There's so, a lot, and the Clone Wars uh, show is actually on Disney on Disney Plus. Plus as well. So if you want to just jump into all that stuff before you get into the Mandalorian, I suggest it. Yeah, but you don't need to. You don't need to. It, it's a it's a great ep- it's a great standalone. Uh, it's great. Yeah. 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 But uh, to continue on with what if the other uh, uh, story that they gave gave out, which I love, and I recommend this to everybody else. Uh, there's a Marvel Zombies that's out there, and it alludes to uh, the zombie world, which is an alternate realm or alternate universe within the Marvel Universe that comes to Earth-616. And the preview shows a zombified Captain America against a Winter Soldier. So, awesome. I love that comic book in the 80s and uh, love... I don't have any. I don't think I kept any of those issues, but I wish I had because those that was some great uh, comic book stuff. The what if being able to see kind of a different take on all of our our favorite superheroes. Like one of the ones that stands out to me was if Mary Jane. What if Mary Jane had been bitten by the spider instead oh, of yeah. Peter Parker? That was a what if comic. Yeah, uh, there was a there was a what there was. They would always do every once in a while, every few years, they would do a kind funny of funny one. a funny one and one yeah. of the ones was what if everybody who was a member of the avengers was always and always stayed um as a member of the avengers and you they had this two-page spread of captain america saying avengers a symbol and just like every, everybody coming <laughs> every hero from the marvel universe <laughs> on this two-page spread is all converging on this one place because they had all stayed as avengers so yeah I, i'm excited There's for so the what much if. yeah yeah yeah. A lot of content coming up. Yeah, so I, I always recommend all those what if comics to everybody because yeah. if you read all the all the comics, you're like, oh, I'm bored of this. Hey, what if the Beast continue uh, Beast and the thing from the Fantastic Four both continue to mutate? What if Gwen Stacy never died? There's, yeah, yeah. There, there's a slew of others. What there's if a lot the Marvel them. bullpen had the Fantastic Four's powers? What would that be? That you think of Stanley with the Human Torch, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. fire ability. Yeah. It was it was a great like I said it was a great comic book. I'm looking forward to the cartoon. Yeah. And uh, so Disney Plus is definitely definitely. And if you are a Hulu subscriber, they do have. If you are already a Hulu subscriber, they do have a bundle. That's what I did. I had to wait until Tuesday to actually do it. But I've I've bundled my Hulu and uh, Disney Plus together now. So I have all of that same content that I always had, and I'm excited for it. Yeah. I have one podcast recommendation that I want to make, and that is House Podcastica. It is on the Podcastica network. They are covering The Mandalorian, 
Uh, we just talked about the, the show, The Mandalorian. I uh, I send these guys voicemails each week. I'm going to try to send them voicemails for every episode of The Mandalorian <laughs> as well. And well, I'm going to hearing... do that this week too, by the way. So <laughs> Yeah, I love hearing the, the, the guys that are doing The Mandalorian podcast for House Podcast are the same guys who did the Ash vs. Evil Dead podcast, which I loved as well. So uh, I'm excited to hear their voices every week and i'm excited i don't know i know i sent them a voicemail for episode two and according to they want to have that out by sunday so i'm not sure when they're gonna record it they're rec- they may be recording it right now they may record it tomorrow i'm not sure um but yeah look for that house podcastica feed uh, for the mandalorian podcast and of course we always recommend everything on the next level network we also recommend anything that's on talk through media talk through media has got a lot of things coming up that they are going to be doing especially after the new year and after picard the the star trek picard show starts when star trek discovery comes back talk through media is going to be going strong yeah definitely and uh you want to tell us where we could be heard Absolutely. If you want to submit your feedback, you can hear us. Uh, well, you can submit feedback also, but uh, you can hear us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple iTunes, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. And if they allow you to give us a, a rating, we would love to have a five-star rating. If they give you the chance to kind of write something in there and they let us know about it, we will read it on the podcast as well. You can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast.com. That will redirect you to our Facebook page, which is where we love to interact with our listeners on our Facebook page. We see, I, I see every week we have new views, uh, not lots of new likes and things. Uh, we've not got a lot of comments, but uh, if you want to comment, please do so. Go to facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can also send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is right there in the middle, spelled out, and the number one at gmail.com. Or you can call us and leave a voicemail at 845-350-2095. That's 845-350-2095. So, Mark, where can we hear? Where can our listeners hear you as well? Well, I'm the co-host of The Walking Dead Talk Through with Brian Malosh on Talk Through Media. And we review The Walking Dead each week. So, everybody, this show, Panels to Pixels, will stay on the Next Level Podcast Network. But there will be a link for Talk Through Media for others to listen to as well. We try to, after we wrap up The Walking Dead Talk Through, I usually try to put it on our Facebook page so you guys could, you know, See it, go to it, and we usually recommend, obviously, every podcast that you listen to us. Uh, But uh, you could listen to us anywhere, either at TalkThroughMedia.com or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. That could be Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, and I believe Spotify. So we are currently working on a lot of things like Steve has mentioned. So just keep in touch here or go to the talkthroughmedia.com website and then you get more information there. And I highly recommend after January 23rd that you actually go listen to the Picard cast because I plan on being on that podcast. Absolutely. That's great. I submit feedback to various podcasts uh, that we always recommend. Uh, Strange Indeed right now is working their way through Castle Rock. I send them feedback and they uh, lost revisited the We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited podcast. They are back with an episode this week. Uh, So check that out. That's on Next Level and Podcastica. That's a joint podcast. But uh, just whatever you do, take the chance. Do podcasting. Mark and I have been doing this now for almost two years, Mark. It's going on three almost. Yeah, we'll be starting our third year, I believe, here. Well, yeah, beginning of 2017 was... So, uh, it's it's a great way to... It's an outlet. It's a way for you to get your voice out there and get heard. Uh, I used to never like the sound of my voice, but now apparently I do. <laughs> we all just have fun. I never liked the sound of my voice, so, but... The, the exactly. thing is, is just having fun talking about something that you like. And if other people are interested, obviously, this is my segue into please submit feedback. <laughs> but, Absolutely. you know, we love hearing from anybody. Anybody. Doesn't matter. You could say hello. Hey, I've been listening to your podcast. Anything. But on the, and the fact that, you know, we just love talking about these shows. And 
would be awesome if you guys, because after Watchmen, we're not sure exactly what we're going to do. We might do a couple of old movie reviews. So uh, if you have any suggestions, do go back to the facebook.com our email address or even send in a voicemail suggesting what you would like to hear about whether it be a comic book in particular made into a movie or maybe something that was comic book like and then we'll talk about it whatever you want we're we're game we're here for you guys absolutely we're not doing this just for us to have fun but what you would like to listen as well so Absolutely. So with that, we're going to say thanks everyone for listening. And I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. Good night, everybody. Good night.